Hello everybody and welcome to Total Gaming Networks and CS Nation's Top 10 Games of 2012. Seeing as how I, Zip, selected each of these titles, you may say that this is really my personal Top 10 of the year, so feel free to disagree or agree at any point. We're going to start things off a little differently. We're going to first list our honorable mention titles. Titles that, while spectacular in their own right, fell just short of making the Top 10 Games of 2012 for one reason or another. All of these titles are new in 2012. We try to exclude things like add-ons or games that may have been released on one platform in a previous year and then later came out on another platform in 2012, which is why you won't see games like Dark Souls or Alan Wake on the list. These honorable mentions are in no particular order. They're simply included in the order in which I have them written down, with an exception to the last game mentioned, and you'll hear why in just a bit. First up, we have Binary Domain. A surprise hit of 2012 amongst the few who played it, Binary Domain offers up solid action experience a unique if not slightly bizarre story, a man named Big Bo, and a French robot. Overlooked by many, it remains one of my favorite titles of the year and I certainly hope to see a sequel at some point in the future, however unlikely that is. Next up on our list of honorable mentions is Fez. Initially it seems like a simple title with slight puzzle solving elements and a unique ability to turn a 3D world into a pseudo 2D platformer. However, tear away at the game's many layers and you discover that there is an entire realm of puzzle solving you probably didn't even know about for the first couple hours of gameplay. Fez takes us back to the days where taking notes for a game was almost a necessity if you wanted to see everything the game has to offer. Upon its release, there was no other game in recent memory that brought together so many gamers all in an effort to crack the game's secrets, language, and last few puzzles. Guild Wars 2 finally saw release this year to a fantastic reception. What really propels this MMORPG above the rest is the fact that there is no monthly fee. The story includes elements of player choice, meaning that some segments may play out differently for you compared to a friend, fantastic voice acting in every story segment, and some of the best visuals and set pieces in any RPG. The combat takes a more versatile and hands-on approach, while the environments offer up numerous world events that allow groups of players in an area to stop what they are tending to individually and band together for a single purpose. While it isn't exactly real-time combat, it is still leaps and bounds better than other, rather stale, repetitive muscle memory combat found in some other MMOs. Released first as an Xbox Live title and then later on the PC, Mark of the Ninja certainly managed to leave its mark on the gaming world. Its tight 2D action is supported by wonderful animations, detailed backdrops, and mechanics that fit perfectly with the style of gameplay featured in the game. Plan out your next 10 moves ahead of time to try and clear out a room before proceeding, utilizing everything that a ninja could possibly ask for, or stealth your way from one area to the next. It's entirely up to you. The game constantly keeps you on your toes with new challenges around every corner. FTL Faster Than Light has already made numerous top 10 lists this year. While it is a very enjoyable title, it isn't necessarily right for everyone. Take your spaceship from one sector of space to the next, hopping from location to location, you will encounter enemy ships that will make use of all your critical thinking skills to take down. Even with the ability to pause time to plan out your next series of attacks, there is an incredible challenge to overcome. One wrong move can be the difference between victory and catastrophic failure in FTL. Not an easy game by any means. Achieving victory in FTL will be sure to wash away the bitter taste of defeat you suffered time and time and time and time again beforehand. Look, forget Diablo 3. The true king of action RPGs this year was Torchlight 2. Instead of there being one multi-level dungeon like in the first game, Torchlight 2 now offers up randomly generated explorable areas and dungeons. Take on the countless foes solo or with some buddies for the ultimate and loot grabbing adventures. Seriously, if you felt put off or disappointed with Diablo 3, Torchlight 2 will be certain to scratch that itch you have for a solid, fun, and gorgeous looking action RPG. I thought long and hard about where to place Dishonored, but it ultimately ended up on the honorable mention list. While it does bring to the table one of the best stealth experiences of the year, sorry Hitman, it just couldn't compete with some of the other titles to hit the market. Still though, it is fantastic, and while the focus is on stealth, Dishonored knows that some players just want to watch the world burn and allows them to Rambo it up, turning a predominantly stealth title into an action shooter for those who want to go that route. Dishonored scores high marks for its unique steampunk visual styles, its fluid gameplay, and its flexibility to let players tackle situations just about however they wanted to. Next up is Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Chivalry is a first person title with a twist, or should I say with a blade. Instead of guns, players square off in medieval garb, complete with large swords that while slow pack one hell of a punch. Bows, arrows, blades, daggers, pole arms, and more. It's refreshing to see that not every FPS experience has to be set in a World War II environment or a modern environment. Plus, you can knock off heads with a well placed strike and what's not to love about that. Natural Selection 2 places aliens against marines for control over a variety of locations. 
Born from a mod for the original Half-Life, Natural Selection 2 not only refines what made the original so great, but it expands upon it in a number of ways that just feels right. Each side plays vastly different from one another and strategies will have to be adjusted on the fly to deal with new threats. As danger lurks around every corner of Natural Selection 2, teams will have to work together to achieve victory. One thing that bumps Natural Selection 2 above the other FPS games out there is the fact that a commander for each side has a top-down strategy view of the map, can issue orders, drop resources when needed, and is oftentimes the key difference between victory and defeat. Plus, the game just looks great. While not as good as Assassin's Creed 2 or Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed 3 still managed to be one of the best open-world experiences in 2012. Set in the United States' infancy, Assassin's Creed 3 dropped some of the more established and built-up cities of Europe for more countryside and open wilderness. It is a slow burn of a game, meaning that the opening, which lasts the first few hours of gameplay, may put off some players, including longtime fans of the series. Not to mention that it would have been fantastic if Connor was a bit less deadpan and a bit more emotionally charged when speaking. However, if you stick with it to the end, you'll find that you actually did have a great time. And who knows, maybe you'll have learned a thing or two in the process. Finally, our last honorable mention title is Mass Effect 3. I thought about this one for a very long time. I thought back to my initial review of the game which largely celebrated the game while slamming its horrific ending. As I've said before about the game, it's a great title up until the last 15 minutes and I wondered if that alone was enough to exclude it from being amongst the top 10. But then I also took into account a few other factors. First up, the day one DLC from Ashes. This alone knocked it off the top 10 spot if only for the fact that it seemed as though this DLC probably added in the most important and surprising character in the history of the series. And then there's the Leviathan DLC, which actually makes the game's ending make a lot more sense and not something that came completely out of left field. Why these two items weren't simply included in the base game to begin with, I'll never truly know. They should have been. And honestly, if they were, Mass Effect 3 would have easily made the top 10 games of 2012. Sadly, despite being an otherwise solid title, it fell just short of the mark. That rounds out our honorable mention titles of 2012. Stay tuned because the top 10 games of the year for 2012 will be coming up shortly. As always, this has been Zips with Total Gaming Network and CS Nation. We'll catch you next time.